Hey, welcome back in Unit 10. We're in Section 2. We're talking about compound probability. Compound. You know, like in English, they talk about compound words. You put two together. Well, compound probability is when we have two or more events. You know what? Let's write that down right now. Compound probability is the probability of two or more events happening. And we're talking about at the same time or one right after the other. We can find compound probabilities by multiplying the probabilities of each event. So this first example we have up here talks about Mr. Bruss. He's going to flip a coin twice. All right, that makes it a little more complicated than just flipping a regular coin. Remember when you flip a regular coin, you got two options. You have heads and tails. Okay, what we want to do is we want to figure out what are all the possibilities that could happen when we flip a coin twice. We get two heads, we get two tails, we get a tails, we get a heads. We have to figure all that out. So to help us out, we're going to build what's called a tree diagram. Tree diagrams help us because they organize everything in a nice little space for us. So let's build that tree diagram. The first thing we need to do is we need to, we need to break down the two events. So the first event is going to be the first flip. So let's write that down, the first flip. We're going to list all the possible things that could happen for the first flip. Now, you flip that coin, what are the possible outcomes? Heads or tails, easy enough, right? Now, after we flip it the first time, we're going to flip it a second time because that's the whole point of this question, right? So we have the second flip. So here's the part where we build the tree diagram. If Mr. Brust gets a heads, then what is possible for his second flip? And some of you might say, well, it really doesn't matter what he gets in the first flip. And you're right. You're going to get the same thing for both of these. But we're going to list the outcomes possible for the second flip if he gets ahead. So if he gets ahead for the first flip, he could get either a head or a tail as the outcome for the second flip. And okay, what happens if he gets a tail for the first flip? Once again, he can get a heads or a tails for the second flip. All right, so now you can see why this is called a tree diagram. You can see how it's kind of growing like a tree, kind of sideways though, right? Um, at the very end, we can list all the possible outcomes. Here are the outcomes. We gotta move Sully's face there, Sully's face coin. So the outcomes for two flips, well, we're gonna read through the branches. So. If we go on the very top branch, we have a heads and a heads. That's two flips, we get two heads. The outcome, I'm just gonna list it like that, a head and then a heads. There's one outcome. Okay, what's the next outcome? We have a heads and then a tails. All right, what about the next branch down here? Well, that means that on the first flip, he got a tails, but then he got a heads. And then lastly, we have the first flip is a tail and the second flip is a tail. So the question was at the very beginning, what is the probability he gets tails twice? So to write that out, I would say the probability, I'm gonna say two tails. What is the probability of two tails? Okay, that would equal, well, how many outcomes do we have? How many different possibilities? We have four different possibilities and how many of those possibilities are two tails? Just the last one here. So it's one out of the four different outcomes. And that's how we build a tree diagram. Okay, now, all of these outcomes right here, that is called the sample space. That's review, we learned that last time. And each one of these is called an outcome. So this is a little bit complicated. We're gonna come back to that tree diagram later. Um, Really, right now, what we're going to use is this rule about multiplying. What is the probability that he gets two tails? Well, what's the probability? If we didn't do the tree diagram, what's the probability of getting a tail? The probability of getting a tail is one out of two, right? So what is the probability of getting a tail and then getting a tail again? Well, the rule is we can multiply. One out of two times one out of two. Guess what that equals? one out of four, and that's what we got when we did the tree diagram. <laughs> Brains exploding, I know this is some complicated stuff, it's next level, I think the best way to get into it is to really do a whole lot of practice. So let's do some practice, we talking about practice. So one of the best ways to do these problems, I'm gonna give you a hint, here's a clue. Look for these words, with replacement, without replacement. 
So these mean different things, right? They mean exactly what they say. With replacement means I take whatever, you know, sometimes I take balls out of a bag, sometimes I take pens out, doesn't really matter. But I take it and I replace it, meaning I put it back in the bag. Down here we say without replacement, which means I keep it out of the bag. Let's look at it. A container holds four red pens, three purple pens, and two blue pens. All right, using the information above, answer the following with replacement. Now with replacement means I am going to take out, let's look at the first one, a red pen. I'm gonna find the probability of that, but then I'm putting the red pen back in the container. Okay, let's draw the container over here. Here's my container, draw it out. So here's my amazing container, and I've listed four red pens and three purple and two blue. All right, so let's check this out. Example number one. Find the probability that I have a red pen, and then I pull out a purple pen. So let's show what that looks like. Here's a red pen. All right, so I pull it out. I shake it up. I pull it out. There's my red pen. With replacement, well, let's, before we talk about that, what's the probability of that happening? Can we write that down? So the probability of the red pens would be there are four out of a total of nine pens, right? We have nine pens total, so that's nine total pens. So the probability of pulling out a red pen to start this problem is four out of nine. All right, now with replacement means I'm gonna take that pen, I'm putting that back in the pen box. Now. I'm gonna pull out my second pen, which is a purple pen. So I look in the box, I have three purple pens. So this time I pull that out. Probability is three out of nine. Now I'm gonna show you how your calculators can help you out. I think working in fractions is a good idea. We like our fractions for these. I wanna put four ninths times three nines. Now, I know most of you are like, hey, that's 12 out of 81. Yeah, of course. But I wanna show you how to use a calculator because it's a tool and we need to know how to use it. Whenever we put a fraction in the calculator, make sure we put parentheses around it. That's super important. So we're gonna put them both in a calculator like this and it gives us this ugly decimal. Check this out. You hit the math button. First choice is turn it into a fraction. And then, oh, it's off the screen. That'll give us a nice reduced fraction. What, did I just show you a trick there? That's gonna give us four out of 27. Now, the old fashioned way to do it is we're just gonna make that 12 out of 81, and then you divide each by three, that'll give you four out of 27. Okay, so that is the answer to the first one. Next one, find the probability that we have a blue, so we'll do that first, that's two out of, what do we say, nine? So the blue is two out of nine, times red, and the red is four out of nine. And remember, we're replacing the pens back in after we take them out. So two out of nine, we take a pen out, we put it back in, and then we grab another pen. That one here is going to be eight out of 81. Right, can we reduce that? I don't think so, we're good to go with that one. So these are two examples of finding compound probabilities with replacement. Now, the next two, guess what's gonna happen without replacement. So let's do the same problem we did for number one. We're gonna do it for number four, the red pen and the purple pen. So we start with our container. We're in the same, same situation. We're gonna pull out a red pen. What's the probability of that? The probability is four out of nine. So we write that down. But when we pull this pen out, we're gonna keep it. We're gonna keep it, we're gonna keep it down here somewhere. So now the box is a little different. How many total pens we got in that box? Not nine anymore, there's only eight. And then how many are purple? We have to count, there's three still. So let's write that down. There are three, but now it's only out of eight because we did not replace. So this, when we work that math out, we get 12 out of 72. And we know that that reduces to what? 12 goes in there, what do we got? Five, six, all right, so one, six. There's the answer. Look at the differences. They're a little bit different. They're close to each other though. They are close, but they're a little bit different. Let's try number five. We gotta put that pen back in though. Get back up there, red pen. Get in that box. Here we go. So 
Find the probability we pull out a blue, and then we pull out another blue without replacement. So the probability we pull out the first blue would be two out of nine. All the, all the pens are in the box. So two out of nine is the first probability. Let's pull that out visually here. Grab that pen. Get out of there. So that blue pen is out. So now what's the probability you pull a blue out? Because we're doing without replacement. I'm not going to put it back in. So now there are only eight pens. And then how many are blue? One. Notice that's different than it was before because one pen is missing. We pulled it out. Total here, we get two out of, again, we're doing 72, which is one out of 36. That's fractions you should be able to do. All right, so that is with replacement and without replacement. Please, please look for those words because they're very important. You'll get the problems wrong if you're not paying attention to whether the items are replaced. Now, before we move to the next part, I want you to notice that when you replace the pens, the first two examples here, notice the prob the bottoms didn't change in the bottom, right? And the probabilities don't change because you're always putting it back in and it's like resetting it. You're going to reset it back to the beginning of the problem. Without replacement, when you keep it out, then things change. So we would like to say that it doesn't matter for the first two because you're always resetting. The probabilities will be the same for the whole problem. We call these type of events independent, whereas the bottom ones, it kind of depends, right? It depends on what you pull out, how many are left, when you pull it out. So these are called dependent events. So do we have independent? Do we have dependent? When we have two events, we have to see if the outcome of one can change the probability of the other. Independent events have probabilities that never change. Whereas if the probabilities can change, then we say the events are dependent. So part of this lesson is being able to figure out, are these independent? Are they dependent? Let's read the first one. You randomly choose a marble from a jar, and then you replace the marble, similar to what we did in the first two. If that's the situation, then we can say that the events are independent because you're replacing it, so the probability is not going to change from event to event. But... Let's try the second one. You randomly draw a card from a deck of cards, and you keep the card, and then you draw another card. It's very similar to what we're doing with the pens. Well, if you keep one card out of a deck, by the way, a deck has 52 cards. Do we know that? If you keep a card out, there's not 52 anymore. There's 51. So that means that those events would be dependent. So you're going to have to be able to identify when probabilities change and the events become dependent as opposed to independent. All right, here's an example using some experimental data. It's very similar. So suppose Mr. Bruss was nice enough to give you a pack of M&Ms. I think he should. If you have Mr. Bruss right now, say, where's my M&Ms? And you count and record how many of each color is in the bag. You select an M&M and eat it. Uh-oh. So in your head, is that with replacement or is that without replacement? If you eat it, hopefully, that's without replacement, right? You don't want to go fish that M&M out without replacement. I don't want to see that M&M after you ate it. No offense. Okay, without replacement. You then select another M&M and eat that too. You must be hangry. Let's find the following probability. So what's the probability we get a red and then a blue? So let's count the total here, just like we always do. I like to pair up the 2 and the 8. That's 10. And 12, so that'd be 22 and 4. There are 26 total. I like to write that down. 26 total when we start. So when you pull out the first red, the probability that the first M&M is red, that is going to be what? Let's do that in red here. 8 out of 26. Come on now. And then I want to pull a blue one out. Well, remember, I ate the first one. So there's no longer 26. So there's only 25 right now. So if there's only 25, how many are blue? There's still seven blue ones in there. And we have to figure out that probability. And you know what? I'm just going to use a calculator for this. It doesn't say fraction and it doesn't say decimal. So I'm going to do it for both. But I'm going to show you how to put it in here just like we did before. 8 divided by 26 times 7 divided by 25. Make sure you're using parentheses around your fractions. 
we're going to hit enter and we're going to get this ugly decimal. So if we want to write the answer as a decimal, there it is. All done. However, I like fractions. So you hit the math button. You can turn that into a fraction. 28 out of 325. I'm going to write them both down because that's pretty ugly, right? So I reread the problem. It doesn't say fraction or decimal, so I'll put both down. 28 out of 325, which is about approximately equal to 0 0.086. Why don't you pause the video and try green and then green. Pause the video. Good luck. Okay, so here's what I got, and here's the tricky part. Check this out. At first, the probability you pull a green one out is 4 out of 26. So here's that first probability. But then you eat it. Right? So there's not 26 left anywhere. There's only 25. And there's not four green because you ate one. There's three green. And so obviously we want to use a calculator for this. We're going to plug it in. Four out of 26 times three out of 25. We hit enter and we get this ugly, ugly decimal again. Uh, but I'm going to hit the math button and then hit enter. And it's going to make my fraction nice and beautiful here. So six out of 325. Ugly. And that was about 0, point, or 0 0.018. That's what that equals, 6 out of 325. So this is a little tricky, I admit it. This probability is a little tricky. So if you're having some questions here, make sure you reach out to your teacher. Okay, our last example here, and I'm going to try to make this quick because I know this video is getting long. But we have an example where Mr. Brust is living on the beaches of Sicily. And he only uses three different shirts, two pair of shorts, and two types of shoes. And the question is, how many total outfits can Brust make? So I'm going to show you how to use a tree diagram to help count all of these different ways. So let's actually list down what are the three different possibilities for shirts that Mr. Brust has. And for shirt choices, we have blue, green, and red. Right Now, if he picks the blue shirt, how many different choices does he have for the shorts? In the shorts, he has two choices, black and white. So I'm going to list those and then connect them to blue. So that's going to start building my tree. It's going to look like this, black and white for the shorts. In fact, I can actually put the same exact thing for green, right? And I can put the same thing for red with black and white because you have those choices for each of the shirts. And now lastly, we have shoes. He has two choices of shoes for each one of these branches. He has flip-flops and Crocs. So here's where it gets a little tedious. We have flip-flops and Crocs for black. We have flip-flops and Crocs for white. And then we have to go through each of the branches and we're listing all the possible outcomes for his shoes. And you're like, yeah, that's the same every single time. It is the same every single time, but it's keeping it organized for us. Remember, the question was, how many different outfits does he have? So now I can read across each one of these branches. I like to start over here on the right. So what is this first branch that says flip-flops? What does that mean? That means he had a blue shirt, black shorts, and flip-flops. Okay, what does the Crocs branch mean? A blue shirt black shorts, and Crocs. And we could list all of those down if we wanted to. And here's what it looks like if I do list them all down. Check it out. Blue, black, flip-flops. Blue, black, Crocs. Blue, white, flip-flops. All the way down the very last branch is red, white, and Crocs. Remember, the whole point here is how many. So we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There are 12 total outputs we'll call them outfits here right so 12 total outfits but let me show you we're going to show you a little shortcut here okay the multiplication principle that we used before when we multiplied probabilities guess what it works for events too so we have three different type of shirts we have two different pair of shorts and two type of shoes Three times two times two, that's three times four, that is 12. That's another way to get it. It's a lot faster, but this shows all of the outcomes in the sample space. Oh Lord, we gotta end it right here. That is too much work, and I know your brain's hurting, my brain is hurting. So if you have any questions, go ahead and ask your teacher. Good luck out there, make sure you check your practice answers. This is Mr. Kelly in Cape Town. Remember, it's nice to be important, it's more important to be nice. See ya.